Amen. Praise God. Amen. These are just jokes. Amen. Some of y'all look like, oh no, oh no. Someone please hurry up and turn the music on. Uh, these are just jokes. I, I, I know my limitations. Amen. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. It's such an awesome privilege to be here it with you in the Lord. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, or you have a, the electronic device with a Bible app on it, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to look at a very familiar set of scriptures, but we're going to look at it from a different perspective this morning. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Amen. If you do not have it, we have it on the screen for you. Amen. If you do not mind standing for the reading of the word, those who can stand. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Uh, the New Revised Standard reads as follows. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body. What you will wear if, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you by worrying can add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who seek all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you, had, had, you need all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of his own, today's troubles, Today's trouble is enough for today. Amen. Thus far, uh, God, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We are, last week we started our study, uh, our theme for this year, uh, Drawing Prayer Circles using Mark Batterson's book, The Circle Maker. Uh, we began last week in earnest, both Sunday, previous Sunday and Wednesday at Bible study. If you have not seen Wednesday's Bible study, I've emailed it to you. You need to go see it. Amen. I know in the past we've kind of moseyed on along and moved. We are going to be moving every week through a different section. And what God is going to do is something big, something incredible, something wonderful. But I'm saying all that to say that one of the aims uh, that part, I'm sorry, excuse me, that Pastor Mark attempts to accomplish in his book, The Circle Maker, is to shift our spiritual perspectives from a me perspective to a kingdom perspective. Amen. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, the focus God wants us to have is a him focus, a God focus, a kingdom focus. Unfortunately, many of us have a very me focus, a, a, a me perspective. In fact, if someone was to look at your prayer life, what would your prayer life say about you? Would your prayer life say that you've been uh, working from pursuing a kingdom perspective or you've been pursuing what's good for you or what's good for the people connected to you? How many times are you praying for the people that despitefully use you or the truth be told, are you praying against them? Come on, tell the truth, pastor, tell the truth. This, I, that, this, this convicted me to, amen, praise God. 
because there's some people, uh, I, I've been like uh, Mama Clump, the, the Grandma Clump on the clumps, amen. Stick them, get them, get them, God, get them, God. That, that, that's the way I, I've been thinking. But the Lord says that's not kingdom focus. You know, king, kingdom focus is not just God, let me make my bills. Kingdom focus is God, bless someone that has nothing who's living on the street or is in the house, but the only thing they can afford is a house. They can't afford food. They can't afford electricity. They can't afford running water. A kingdom perspective says, you know, it's just not about my children in my neighborhood, at my school. It's about all children. A kingdom perspective says, you know what, the right to vote isn't simply limited to persons that come from a WASP background. Y'all know what that is? It's white Anglo-Saxon Protestant background. Amen. It's, it's Eurocentric background. Kingdom focus, a kingdom perspective, is on everything. Hence, that's why God's sermon this morning is entitled Shifting to a kingdom perspective. If we are going to pray, 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 pray prayers, and if we're going to literally experience, witness, observe God do the impossible for us, we must gain a kingdom perspective. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That means... That, that, that means it, it, it's always it's always and only what is it that God wants me to do? Okay, uh, that, that's gonna be a little hard for some of us. Amen. Let's let's be for real. Amen. I'm gonna be honest with you. Amen. Uh, football coming on in a couple hours, and so I mean I I'm gonna go ahead and tell you I'm here to see the Cowboys and the Eagles lose. Amen. I'm here for it all. Amen. I'm here to see them be thrashed and whatnot. But what if God says, Al, I need you to go here and minister here? What if during this call, during this service right now, the church gets a call. Deacon Rimber answers the call. They call the church, and there's another church that says, you know what? We can't find our pastor. We don't know where our pastor is. Can you send yours over here to minister to us? The kingdom perspective says, I'm tired. It says, in spite of being tired, in spite of being having given it, you're all here right now. Al, you got to get up and go preach, to go minister. I know you want to watch the game. I know you want to see the Pittsburgh Steelers clinch it today. I know you want to do that, but you got to do what thus says the Lord. How many times when it's been a choice between what we want to do and what God wants us to do, we've teetered over into the we section, the me section. Amen. Come on, tell the truth, Shane, the devil. You ain't got, don't let me be the only one raising my hand. Come on. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. The, the, uh, amen. Let me, I'm going to tease him because he's here. Uh, but the only reason why I can get uh, Brother Sean to come to Bible study because his wife makes him come to Bible study. Amen. And as long as Sister Carol makes him come to Bible study, I'm good. I tell Sister Carol the check is in the mail. Amen. Amen. Because it says, Bro Brother Sean is having other ideas. He's like, well, you know, I need to clean up the garage. I need to cut the grass. Who? Brother Sean was the only one out there in that minus 10 degree weather when we had that ardent blast. All about Pastor, I don't know if I can come to Bible study. I got grass to cut. That me. <laughs> that me perspective. Well, today, Jesus takes us a task about that. In fact, today, Jesus compares us to Gentiles. Because he says, the Gentiles worry about me. They do not worry about God. In fact, he speaks about birds of the air and lilies of the field. And he talks about how neither one of these two types of created beings really care for themselves. In fact, they depend on God for that. 
and he, he, he shows, he, he's showing the distinction between the lilies and the birds' faith versus ours. And he says that if we want to surpass the birds of the air and the lilies of the field, we must seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And then, then we will surpass them. Amen. So this morning, he's going to work with us. I want to get right into it. Uh, uh, amen. If we're, we're shifting to a kingdom focus, a, a perspective. I want us to get right into it uh, and see what the Lord has. Give me my first point. Amen. Amen. Shifting to a kingdom focus. Shifting our focus to a kingdom perspective requires us to acquire a much greater appraisal of our value to the Lord God Almighty. Shifting our focus to a kingdom perspective requires us to, to acquire a much greater appraisal of our value to the Lord God Almighty. Let me tell you what God meant when he was saying this here. So let's go back. God is, uh, uh, look at those lilies and look at those birds. And God says, look at the birds of the air. He said they neither reap, no sow, no harvest. They do not gather anything into a barn. In other words, they do not worry about what what seed they're going to eat. They don't plant the seed. They don't cultivate the seed. They don't turn the ground over. They don't even, they, these jokers ain't even cool, got enough sense to get the seed, put it in some place, so in the case of a rainy day, they have something to eat. You know what they do? They trust God for everything. The lilies of the field. He said they don't uh, water themselves. They don't give themselves nurturing. They don't care for themselves. Yet Solomon and all his wisdom is not as beautiful as a lily in the field. Amen. Praise God. And he says, he tosses it off and says, don't you know that you're worth more to your father in heaven than the birds of the air? And the lilies of the field. Okay, so you don't know when to celebrate. That, that, that should have had you jumping up and down. You mean so much to your father in heaven that he literally moved heaven and earth for your well-being. Think about this. How many of us got kids in here? I got kids. And I love y'all to life. However, I'm not sacrificing not one of them for you. Amen. In fact, if it comes, if, if it's me sacrificing and you getting salvation, you just SOL'd. Y yes, you are. Hey, 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 you know, hey, come on, Sean. They, see, they want me to lie to them. Yes, yes. Come here, Zoe. Lay down on the altar. We're going to sacrifice you. TK, give me that iPad. Come on here, boy. Yo, you got to share, but no, I ain't shedding none of their bloods. Amen. Y'all are on your own. But yet God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so, so that whoever believes in him shall not die but have everlasting life. And it's just not the life to come. It's this life because he said, I came that you can have life and have it more abundantly. And here's the thing he has shown us time and time again. He loves us. How many times have you been sitting here trying to figure out how you're going to make them two last red pennies that you rubbing together stretch for a bill? How many times we've been joking about, yeah, I can't write that check, that check going to bounce. Yeah, it's going to bounce right into another blessing, into another blessing. How many times God has shown you, yeah, your check is rubber, but not the rubber you think it is? How many times have you been sick? Have you been uh, ill? Have you been suffering from a medical condition where persons told you, you know what, you ought to rethink your life, rethink what you're doing. You ought to sit your hind parts down and not, and, but yet God heals you, makes you better, restores you. And when people see you, they're like, oh, Deborah, I didn't know that was you. Look at you. Amen. Hey, man, when I first met Dick and Kenzie, Dick and Kenzie had the Halle Berry haircut. It was real short. Amen. We came in after COVID, and she got these long four eyes. I was like, who was that young woman coming up in here looking like that? Oh, don't let my wife see her. Oh. So Lady Nicole going to jump down her throat. Like, you can't come here with my husband in here looking like that. Amen. Praise God. 
God holds us up here. In fact, in the level of creation, I think the only thing that's been created higher than us are angels. For the word said we were created just a little lower than the angels. Ain't no lion higher than you. Ain't no dog, no cat, no bird, no fish. Ain't none of these majestic mountains that we like to sing about and these flowing seas of wheat. No, we are almost the pinnacle of the pyramid. Amen. So if God deems us almost a pinnacle of the pyramid, why are you treating yourself even less than? Amen. I'm not telling you to be arrogant, but I'm telling you not to let certain people treat you the way they treat you. People walking up on you, lying to you, saying whatever they want to say to you, and they think you're supposed to take it and believe it. You know good and doggone well they had to get together and then invite you. And you say, hey, I heard you get together. You know what? It really wasn't. No pe you know everybody and their mama was at that get together. You get big enough and bold enough, say, that's fine. I don't need your get together. I don't need to be around you. Because I have a get together with my father who's in heaven. And guess what? I don't care how good your party is. Nothing, nothing over, overshadows, overcomes a Holy Ghost party. In fact, some of us need to get comfortable in our own skin in 2023. You ain't got to be chasing everybody. Everybody ain't meant to be around you. Everybody ain't meant to have your time, your space, your attention. Some people, you need to cut them. Don't worry, I'm preaching to me right now. I'm not preaching to you. I'm not pre this, uh, this is my life. I'm talking to me right now. There's some folks about to get cut. And I mean cut. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. There's some folks that are about to get cut. They only know they're going to get cut. Because when I do the inventory, when I do the analysis, when I look at how they've treated me, I don't see the love that I've given them. I mean, here's the thing. I don't post anything really about my family on Facebook. I view about me. Because I believe there should be some, some distinction between my personal life and what you see on Facebook. Amen. Praise God. Uh, but I noticed something this birthday. And my birthday was just a couple weeks ago. I watched who did and did not wish me a happy birthday. And I thought about that. Because I, I, when I go on Facebook, the first thing I'm looking for is the birthdays. And I take the time to wish everyone birthdays. And, I, and not just your birthdays, your mama's birthday, your daddy's birthday, your children's birthday, your great-grandmama who's in heaven, your Aunt Lou, your Uncle Fanny, whoever they are, I take the time to wish. And you couldn't wish me a happy birthday? I remember I shared on Facebook so that people who knew dead want to come to the funeral, I shared the arrangement, the funeral arrangement on Facebook. And I still can see, because it's still on my page, who all did and did not at least say, bro, we're praying for you. And we're praying for you. A lot of the folks that couldn't take time to show me love, Okay, I was going to say ask where they were, but I'm not going to say they did. They're not going to, because I can see them. Sisters, if he can't call you at an appropriate time in the evening, okay, you tell him your phone goes off at 9 o'clock at night. Amen. If you got an iPhone, I don't know about them old raggedy Samsungs, but you got an iPhone, you can put it on a do not disturb. It goes on do not disturb at 9 o'clock. Don't call me 1.30, 2 o'clock talking about, hey, you up? What you doing? Here, here's another thing. If, 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 if he makes a date with you on Monday for Friday and he can't keep the date 
nor can he call you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and share with you something that's come up that now you sit here waiting at 8 o'clock, you're supposed to have dinner at 5, and he calls you at 8.30, talking about, I'm sorry, I didn't, my, my uncle died. When did he die two weeks ago? You couldn't tell me then? Snip, snip, snip. Your appraisal, how you value your, you got to value yourself like God values you. In fact, this is another I say to you all the time. Cause now, here's the thing. I, I ain't going to put my children on the line for y'all, but I'll put my life on the line for my children. Amen. Amen. All right, she ain't dead right now. She can hear because she's helping running the video right now. I'll put my life on the line for my wife, my sugar woman, because that's, that, that's, that's my love. Amen. Anyone that close to you should have, let me tell you something, I was having lunch, not lunch, breakfast with my mentor last week, and I was sharing how we were, I was someplace, and his name came up. So at first I was going to sit back and, but then what happened, his name was being disparaged. I knew that what they were saying was not the truth, because I was there. I knew it. And the Lord said, wait a second, if that's who you care about, you defend him. And so what happened, because he, he, he brought it up. He said, you know, I heard it. I said, yeah, I was there. And he said, I said, you got to worry about it. I got you. I said, because I'm of the belief that if you love me and you care about me and you're someplace and someone starts to spare me, I shouldn't, you, no one's got to call me to come defend myself because you should be defending me. As I said, same here. I, I straightened that out. I said, no, that is not who you're talking about. Because the person you're talking about, one, did not say that at that time. Nor did they say it any time. In fact, the, 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 he said something the exact opposite that cuts against everything you're saying. He was supportive. He was agreeing with everything that you wanted to do. So why are you out here disparaging him right now? I told, told Doc, I said, Doc. That's the first thing. Shifting to a kingdom focus requires us to uh, 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 appraise our value the way the Lord God Almighty appraises our value. Our second thing, shifting to a, our focus on kingdom perspective requires us to understand our standing with God. Amen, amen. Uh, amen. Let me ask you this question. Uh, has there ever been a time in your life when, when you, when you uh, have asked God for something and he did not give it to you? I, th th there have been times you did that. And, and when he didn't give it to you, you got upset, didn't you? Initially. Amen. I ain't going to lie. Ain't no... I asked him for Halle Berry. Didn't give it to me. Very upset with God. Him and I weren't talking for a long time after that. I'm like, every time I turn around, here she is trying to date some dude. Don't she know she need me? Amen. Praise God. When the lottery was $2 billion. Amen. Don't worry. Church won't get his 10. No 20%. Amen. Praise God. 10% for the tithe, 10% to unlock the blessing. I, I was playing the, the I, was, I asked him for the $2 billion. He didn't give it to me. Felt some kind of way. Amen. Uh, one of the dealerships, one of the more luxurious, luxurious dealerships was giving away a free car. I registered every day for the free car. I figured the more I registered, the more the odds would be in my favor, and I still didn't win. I had to, I had to, I had to sit there on that dealership parking lot and talk to God for a second. Like, wait a second, Jesus, I did my part. I registered over and over and over again. Still didn't win. And so it made me say to God, God, how important am I to you? How, how, how much, what's the 
what's my standing with you? And the Lord said to me, are you trying to judge your standing with me by whether or not I let you win a lottery or get a car? Uh, <laughs> he, 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 said, he said, come here, boy. Sit down. Let's talk. Let me tell you your standing with me. Your standing with me is such that whenever you need to minister, I'm already in your future ministering for you. I ain't saying, this is not Al talking to you right now because Al stutters. I stammer. Moses and I have that to get in, in common. It's all I can do sometimes just to get it out. And I realize it's God. Many things that God has, many things I've done, God has enabled me to do. I realized something. I, I, was, I was writing a chapter uh, the other day, and I was thinking about the fact that every bar I took, I passed it on the first time. I took multiple bars. And I look back, the passes rate for passing the bar the first time is something like 25% of everyone who does it. Think about it. When I took the North Carolina bar, 2,500 persons took it. In Raleigh, we were at um, the, UN, the, the, the North Carolina State Gym. We were in the gym, uh, the convocation center. It was that many of us, all right? Only 400 of us passed. Only. When I took the Florida bar, there were thousands. We were in the Tampa Convention Center. We were in the, uh, the, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we were in their uh, covered area. They had us all over town. We had places to report to, to take the bar. Only a handful of us, in fact, try this on. My valedictorian in law school took the bar four times. I stopped keeping track of that, but she, she did not pass the bar. Brilliant, wonderful girl four times, lost the prestigious job that we all were fighting for only to become a public defender. Nothing against public defenders. But I mean, she literally had life set out for her. And God says, I, I gave you the detour around all that. And you asking about your standing. He said, he, he said, he said I, I bless you with beautiful babies. He said, y'all weren't spring chickens when you had them babies. In fact, I, I, be, I, I make you laugh. When, when, when we got pregnant with, with uh, Ryan, the first thing my wife said, she said, now you know I'm in the critical zone. I said, what does that mean? I'm in a, a high-risk pregnancy. I said, well, you've only been pregnant 24 hours. How are you high-risk? And she said, because my age. And I, I said, you know, they, they're having it so 80-year-old women are having babies now. Not, 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 I, 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 no, no I, didn't say, I didn't say you wanted to have the, look at all my 80-year-olds over there. I didn't say you wanted to have the baby. I'm just saying they're making it so an 80-year-old can have a baby. Amen. A -a Amen. And God said to me, you know what, your wife, your wife wasn't lying to you. She was high risk. And not simply because of her age, because of some health concerns. And by the time we got the TK, she was deaf. In fact, I went to one of her doctor's appointments. The doctor said, every time you've been here, your blood pressure has constantly gone up and up and up. So much so that he was unwilling to let her go home. He sent us to the, uh, to the uh, a hospital. We gave, we gave birth to uh, TK. He said, at any given time, I could have rung your bell. And I didn't have to ring your bell to ring your bell. I could have let something happen to these babies in utero. I could have let something happen to your wife. I could have let something happen to your mama, your brother. Anytime, he said, do you know I bless them because I love you? And you got nerve to be asking me what your, what your standing is with me? He said, ninja, please. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what uh, the, the Motion Picture Association and the, the record labels do. They, they, they bleep you out when you start using bad words. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the, you know, uh, 
me. He said, Ninja, please. He said, he said, you, you mean the most to me. And for someone here, I want you to know this. You mean the most to God. God loves you so much that he put your, in fact, you, every time he wake up, he's waking up saying, uh, 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 what's Sean doing? What's Sharon doing? What Ursula doing? In fact, here it is. You try, because you know how you get up with your little funky attitude in the morning. You dragging. You upset. Uh, and she's like, I just laid down. And now the alarm clock going on. And he's like, you ready to go? You ready to do it? You ready to play? He's like a little kid. And you're like, oh, God. This. You're trying to get the frog out your voice. Knowing you're a soprano talking like this. Oh, God, give me a moment. You are the most important thing to God care if no one else tells you. Most important thing to God. So if you understand your standing, then you should not ever worry about what it is God's going to do for, for you. Amen? So our first point, shifting our focus to a kingdom perspective requires us to acquire a much greater appraisal of our value to the Lord God Almighty. Second point, shifting our focus to a kingdom perspective requires us to understand our standing with God. And third, shifting our focus to a kingdom perspective requires us to operate according to kingdom principles and pursue kingdom purposes. I was saying this earlier when I asked you if someone uh, looked at your prayer life, would your prayer life be indicative of a kingdom perspective? Would they know that you are a Christian because you are out here uh, representing the kingdom? Amen. A -a 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 Amen. And so I I I'm back to it now. Amen. I'm back to it now uh, because we're talking about kingdom principles and kingdom purposes. Amen. Praise God. Uh, a, a, amen. Uh, kingdom principles and kingdom purposes are different from worldly principles and worldly purposes. The world says if someone smacks you, blow their head off with a gun. Tell the truth. The, these folks don't fight no more. That's why you can't argue with folks out here. Because you don't know who carrying. And here you are. You about to tell them, give them peace of your mind. They give you pieces of your mind back. The kingdom of God says, when, 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 someone, when someone speaks bad about you, don't handle them the way they handle you. Pray for them and seek, figure out what's going on. Here's, here's what the kingdom of God says, says. The kingdom of God says, if I'm out someplace and I see someone shivering, uh, it's not, I'm not supposed to go buy the person a coat. I'm supposed to give him my coat. How many of us are good? I see some of you have walked in with coats here today. I guess it's a little cool on you. Amen. If you ain't got your coat, you got your... Mom, what you call that thing, that black and white? Oh, that's a scar Come on, Mom B. Is that a scar for Pashmina? I can't ever tell which one is which, because they look like the same to me. Amen. Hey, you got your scars, your Pashminas. You got your your copes, because you, you can't call them capes anymore. You got your copes and whatnot. And you're wearing that because you, you feel a certain way. Now, if someone was cold on the street, you giving it up? Nope. I can see Sister Will me right now. Jimmy, go, go run the house right quick. In that box of old coats, go get one of them old coats. Bring this back to Brother Sean. If he was to say, well, you know, I was going to just give him the coat you got for Christmas. You better not give him that coat. You don't, I don't. Sit on the news. Old man get beat up by his wife for giving away a coat. But the kingdom perspective says, give the coat you're wearing. The kingdom perspective says that, that here's the thing. You don't not associate with the bad people. Amen. Praise God. So let me, let me, you look at me like, wait a second, Pastor. Jesus went to have dinner with the sinners. Prostitutes, tax collectors, uh, money changers, all the people that were bad. 
And the Pharisees showed up one day, watching him in the house, talking about hip-hop, hooray, oh, hey, Jesus in there doing the electric slide, the Cupid shuffle and whatnot. And they're like, is your master in there in the party with them? And the disciples are like, yep, he's in there. So you know one of them walked, one walked up there, he walked up to the DJ booth, pulled the needle off the record and said, hey, you over there named Jesus, what you doing in here? And Jesus says, it's not the well that I need of a doctor, it's the sick. How can a doctor provide treatment to the sick if the doctor won't go where the sick are? See, kingdom per perspectives are principles so, amen, praise God. I'm just going to make this up, amen. I don't even want to think I'm saying this about you, amen. Let's say we had a member named Sally. Do we have a member named Sally? We don't have a member named Sally, okay. Okay, that may be too close. Lakawishanika, that's her name. Lakawishanika, I know we ain't got no member named that. She came in here, sat right there in the, in the chair, and the first thing y'all said is, look at her, come in here with that outfit, look like she going to the club. Don't you know pastors are married man wearing a skirt that stops right here so that you can see all her stuff. Look at coming here with, with, with all look, look, looking like a loose woman, like a prostitute. And we all sitting on this side of the church talking about how dare she. Kingdom principle says that someone should have got up and come over here and sat right next down to her and said, hi. I'm such and such. Welcome to First Fellowship, Charlotte. We're so glad you're here. What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Engaging them. That's what kingdom principles say. The world says otherwise. Kingdom purposes. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. In fact, um, uh, many times, uh, Paul says this, many times, kingdom purposes to the world seems foolish. He even went so far and said to the group, to the Jews, it seems criminal. Because kingdom purpose had Jesus die on a tree. The Jews have a law that says anyone who dies on a tree is cursed. The, the, the Greeks would say anyone who dies on a tree for someone else is a fool. But kingdom purpose was so that we could have salvation. Jesus wasn't doing it for him because he was already saved. He's a Christ. He's, a, he's God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. That's, he didn't do it for him. He did it for us. But kingdom purpose cuts across what we... All right, so y'all... That, 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 amen. Oh, God. Praise God. Shagadugadudu. Amen. Uh, uh, let me give you real life kingdom purposes, okay? Everybody else... Everyone works from 9 to 5, but everybody else on the job shows up at 9 o'clock and leaves at 4.30. Your hours of employment are 9 to 5, and your lunch is 11.30 to 12.30. And when you go to lunch, you go at 11.15, you come back at 2 o'clock. Come on, shit, tell, tell the truth, shame the devil. Some of us do that gonna blame it on the line. You know, at Chick-fil-A there was a line and I had to wait in the line to get my food. That's the way the world does it. Kingdom purpose says, yes, this is not, where you work is not the church. It's not really kingdom. But because you are a kingdom citizen, you don't wait to show up the job at nine, you get there however early you need to be, so at nine, you're ready to go. Kingdom purpose says, you don't steal from your employer by cheating them on the time card. If the, if the job says your lunch hour is from 11.30 to 12.30, you make sure you can get the lunch and back at your desk so that at 12.30, you back on the clock. If the job says you don't get off at 5, kingdom purpose says, guess what? 5 is just an advisory. Because you know that in order to give it your best, give it your all, you got to say to 6, you don't even trip when the clock hits 5. You, in fact, kingdom purpose says you give to your employer the same way you would give to God. 
and vice versa. So some, some of us, the problem is not that. It's the, just the opposite. Some of us aren't giving to God the same way we're giving to uh, our employers. The job says, okay, this weekend you got to come into work. You don't even fuss about it. Yet I'm five minutes over your time there to which you think you should be sitting in church. Oh, my God. Who preached too low? He does this. Oh, we need a new pastor. Won't say nothing to the job, but in essence, what you're saying to God is that, God, you're taking too long. Kingdom purpose, kingdom principles. I'm done. I'm getting ready to take a seat. I'm going to leave you with this encouragement because, again, evidently, you don't know when to praise. Amen. Praise God. Because God makes a distinction. He says, do not pray like Gentiles. Gentiles never pray for kingdom. And oh God, oh thank you Jesus, I forgot to say this. Kingdom for us is synonymous with impossible. Okay? The Gentiles only pray for what is possible. They only pray for a house, food, clothing. Amen. Praise God. Not realizing that in their houses are closets Full clothes in our refrigerators, food spoiling because we can't eat it fast enough. Gentiles worry about what they already have, not kingdom citizens. Kingdom citizens aren't worried about what they have. We aren't worried about what we need because we know the Lord we serve knows that we have need of before we do. We know He we know He knows we need to eat. We know he knows we need clothes. We know he knows we need transportation. We know he knows we need housing. That ain't tripping for us because that's every day. And not only do we know he knows we need it, but we know he, he's already started going about providing for us. When the last time anyone here slept out under the stars because you didn't have a house? And, and, and you better stop because I can hear you thinking, well, Pastor, I ain't the house I want. The house I want was on Mega Mansions the other day. I'm in this one room, one bathroom, and one studio. And what I want is a mansion flowing. Do you know how much a mansion flowing costs to operate? The power bill is more than your rent. And if you're going to sit here getting mad on the 30th and 31st of every month talking about this doggone rental company is asking for this rent and you tripping about paying your little funky whatever you paying, then you ain't ready for a mega mansion. But here's the thing. This is a wonderful thing. This is what I'm getting to about God. So God says, don't be like Gentiles. In other words, don't be like numbers. Don't be like people who don't trust me, who doubt me, who question me. He said, instead, be like people who have absolute faith in me. I said this once before, I'm going to say it again. Everyone else should be cheerleaders. God, God, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. Go, God! G-O-D, God's for me. G-O-D, God's for me. People ought, people ought to get sick and tired here you come. Because it's a, it, it, it sounds like a, it sound like a never in the party. Because you, I'm telling you, you should be to the point, Sister Ursula, that everywhere you go, you should be like, do you know how good my God is? You in Starbucks, buying a latte, mocha, loca, chaka, naka, doom, doom, amen. Okay, whatever that means, and skinny at that. And you buying, a, and you should be up there talking about, do you know how good my God is? My God, let me be able to buy an $8 cup of coffee. My God, my God kept me yesterday. You know, I was on 77 just when that accident, that power up happened, and I avoided it. You know what? I was in the hospital. I was on my deathbed. And they told my people to call and bring it. But look at me now. I'm sitting here right here talking to you. I was unemployed. I couldn't find a job. I couldn't make ends meet. But that, but every day God sustained me. God kept me to the point that you didn't even know that I was unemployed. 
You ought to be, you ought to be bragging. People are, because they're like, you know, she or he is so braggadocious. What do you mean? They're, you know, he, they're bragging about God all the time. They're agios braggadocious. Uh, bragging on what is holy all the time. That should be us. Because kingdom focus is not worried about how little we have. Kingdom focus says, how are we going to deal with all these blessings? Amen. A -a -a amen. Uh, can y'all imagine a day where you're sitting in your house and you're trying to balance your checkbook? Uh, and the problem is you, you, you can't balance it, not because there's nothing in there. You, you can't balance it because you can't have lost track of how much money you have in there. That God has been just pouring blessings and blessings and blessings into your bank account that somehow or another you can. Now I, I, I know some of us are saying, oh, no, I ain't going to ever forget that. No, it can happen. That's an impossibility to you, all right? So, amen. I know what to pray for God. We pray to God for, for you. To bless you to the point you can't keep track of it. That's what the word says. He'll open up the window of heaven and pour us out blessings that we cannot contain. Imagine that. Imagine. Here it is. Here, here it is. You, come on, my 80-year-old women that don't want to have babies at this age. Imagine y'all end up meeting your second or third Boaz. And guess what? He's like, we're going to have some babies. Amen. Look at her. They're all looking like, oh, no, he's not. We're going to have some babies. I'm sitting up here every other weekend doing christenings with babies, with parents at 120 years old. I don't know why you're tripping. God, God gave a baby to a 99-year-old and a 100-year-old. So why do you think your 80-year-old is something? Uh, 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 Elizabeth, amen, not my wife. Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, had a baby when she was old and barren. So why are you tripping when I'm saying that you're going to enter? Uh, let, me, let, me get a, let, me, let me talk to you, Sean, because they're going to get mad. They're they going to come here all pregnant, and they're going to blame it on me. Amen. Praise God. A -a 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 amen. Hey, you, you got kingdom believing says, please, God, for the impossible. Who in here has got debt? I know I'm, I do. Can you imagine a day when you are debt free? Well, you ain't paying interest compounded with penalties and fees and all this other stuff? Can you imagine walking up to someone someone say, you know what? Da, 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 da. That's all right. I own my own house. No one owns it but me. I own my car. I, I'm, I'm riding for free right now. Amen. Can you imagine that? Kingdom citizens can. Can you imagine God taking you to the next level? Kingdom citizens can. Can you imagine God restoring and reconciling your family? Kingdom citizens can. Can you imagine God choosing you to make the difference in the community? Kingdom citizens can. Can you imagine God to literally expand your horizons to the point that people look at you and they can't even recognize you? Kingdom citizens can. That's because kingdom citizens believe God for the impossible. Let me tell you this and I'm going to sit down, I'm going to close my mouth, I promise. If you can start believing God for the impossible, then God will start giving you the possible. You sitting here worried about what you're going to eat, and God is saying, I'm about to give you a filet mignon, I'm about to give you a porterhouse, I'm about to give you a veal, I'm about to give you all these things. You sitting here worried about how, how you, what, what's going to happen with that old rusty, dusty car. Some of y'all getting ready to ride around and Bentleys and Rolls Royces and people going to be looking at you like, wait a second, is that Sister Richardson riding around in a brand new Bentley Ghost or, or, or Rolls Royce Phantom? Yes, it is because that's what kingdom citizens believe. They believe God for the impossible. It is not only the things we get, but we believe God for the impossible of doing things. That's why someone's going back to school and someone's going to get their master's. Someone's going to get their doctorate. Someone's going to get their certification. In fact, someone's just going to go to school just to get their undergraduate degree. And for some, for that person, persons told them that going to school for them was going to be impossible. But they're going to show that all things, 
not some things, not a few things, not a things, but all things work for, work for the good of those who love God according to his purpose. You've got to shift your thinking to a kingdom perspective, a kingdom focus. And if you do, God will use you. God will bless you. God will favor you. And you'll be sitting back wondering, how did I ever get over Amen. Sister Wilmina, you and Brother uh, uh, Rupert, y'all might want to talk to Brother Sean. Don't tell him, don't come in here threatening, challenging me to preach no more. Amen. A amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Here's the thing. Kingdom focus, kingdom perspective uh, begins with entering the kingdom. Amen. You cannot be a citizen of the kingdom if you haven't applied for citizenship. Okay. And unlike most geopolitical sovereign nation state cities the application process is simple we don't need your birth certificate we don't need your social security card we don't need three uh, uh, persons that can testify for who you are we don't need your <coughs> previous residential history your financial history all he needs and knows I change the subject we to he all he needs is your unbounded your unrestricted love and faith that to enter into this kingdom God is requiring us to believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that his son Jesus is Lord to his glory and he says that if we would believe in his son as the Christ, then we would be saved. That death would have no meaning to us. That even when death comes, death is not the end. Death is merely a doorway which lets us take off this mortal and put on immortality, this corruptible, and put on incorruptible. I want you to have a kingdom perspective, but in order for you to have it, I need you to become a kingdom citizen. So right now, in the privacy of your own heart, I want to lead you to God. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you right now for our brothers and our sisters who are standing at the gate of the kingdom wanting to become kingdom citizens. Father God, we know, we know what this world is like and how this world treats people and how this world uh, 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 can be. But God, in spite of this world, in spite of how this world can be, God, we are believing you, God, for the impossible. We want you, God, to pick us up to en en envelop us with your hands, to shower us with your mercy and your grace. Forgive us of our sins, God. As we make this profession of faith, as we declare boldly that your son is Lord to your glory, forgive us of our sins, remove them, purify us, purge us, clean us, so that when you look at us, you don't see our sins, but you see the blood of your son, Christ Jesus. Grow us, God. Develop us into... Uh, disciples and stewards that bring you glory, bring you honor, bring you praise. Use us, God, so that we may add to the kingdom, even if it's one person. God, use us so that we may add to the kingdom. Bless us, God. Love us. And God, when it's over, please personally come down here to collect us. And to take us back to heaven to be with you for all eternity. It's in your sons. Mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If you accepted, if you prayed that prayer today for the very first time, you have prayed what we call a, a sinner's prayer. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Every one of us who accepted Christ, we prayed some kind of prayer like that. That is the price of a mission. Amen. And if you believed in what you were praying, then you are saved. Amen. You are no longer who you were when you first came in those doors. You are no longer who you used to be last night, last week, last month, last year. You are now a new creation in Christ. And what we want you to do, if you're here, I want you to come down. But I see everybody. I recognize everybody. I don't think uh, uh, anyone here hasn't received Christ yet. But if, the, if you haven't, if I'm wrong, if you haven't received Christ and today's the first day, I want you to come down. Uh, here in the front. For those who are watching us on the live stream on Facebook Live and watching us later on on YouTube on the playback, you may be accepting Christ for the very first time today. You may, today may be the day you decide to give yourself to God. If that's so, that's fine too. We want to give you a chance to uh, walk in that newness too. This is what I want you to do. You see up there in the uh, left hand corner of the screen, there's my Facebook profile, there's my email. Send me either a private message on Facebook or send me an email telling me that you accepted Christ uh, today and you and I, we will begin this walk together. We will, uh, uh, I, I have this belief in my mind that God expects us to do in the spiritual what we do in the natural. In the natural, we birth babies, we raise them, we take care of them, we provide them, we protect them until they can grow up to provide for themselves and do for themselves. Same thing in the spirit. We walk with you, we talk with you, we nurture you, we grow you, we help you develop and become the disciple and steward that God would have you to be so that you can be a faith-wielding, faith-possessing, faith-slinging uh, disciple and steward that brings him glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Amen. Send me that email. Send me uh, uh, that private message. Amen. And we will uh, go from there.